And while the exhibition is, of course, not only focusing on the heart, but explains and shows the entire human body and explains in great detail, but also easy to understand for lay people, it is also emphasizing on the heart and the cardiovascular system. You may ask, why did you choose a heart? Good question. But I feel, and you may certainly agree, the heart has always been, in any society all over the world, a very special organ. Whether it's literature, art, pop culture, religion, the heart all over the world has been seen as a seat of our soul, a seat of love, compassion, courage. But when it comes to our own heart, we only think of it when it is distressed and diseased. And due to this habit, it's no wonder that cardiovascular diseases are the killer number one in our Western societies. I want to make our visitors understand how the cardiovascular system nourishes our bodies throughout the entire life. The way the bodies are designed, or I guess I, I would extend your question um, to the question, why are they posed in a very lifelike state at all? When we started doing full body specimens, and I must say in anatomy that was not really a natural thing. Our professor at Heidelberg University said, no, no, good, uh, don't do a full body specimen. I rather like a separate limb, I rather like a different organ separate, so easy to handle. Um, but we understood we, we are complete human bodies. We are just not an assembly of um, single organs. And by studying a full body specimen, you, as a student, get a much better impact of the entire human body. But nonetheless, our very first specimens, they were very straight, like an anatomical model. And when we wanted to show the feet, we just bend the knee, and that's it. So the specimen looked a little odd. And when we had our very first exhibition in 1995 in Japan, which was widely um, successful, visitors said, it's so interesting, but we also feel frightened because the specimens look so dead. And that was a moment when we immediately felt reminded by the Renaissance artists. When you look at these wonderful pictures they left behind, they are, the specimens are in very lifelike positions, sometimes even um, in doing things, even praying. Um, and we understood when we want to address our visitors, who are basically lay people who might have not even been um, exposed to a corpse at all, we need to appeal them. The specimens need to be looking beautiful. They need to be relevant to our visitors so that they can say, wow, what I'm looking at, that's actually me. It's a little person. So they need to be lifelike. They need to be uh, memorable. And we also learned over the years, the more dramatic, the more frozen in time, uh, the more they are relevant to our visitors and the more they will stay in people's mind. We need a year to finalize a full body specimen. And um, it really requires a lot of work um, from um, prior to plastination because we first do the anatomical dissection. And once it's impregnated, which is a vacuum process, um, then also a lot of work occurs in the, in the positioning to get life back to the specimen, to make sure that all the sections are correct and that all anatomical structures are at their right position. So we calculated on, um, on an average for full body specimen, we work 1,500 hours. And the second question was, uh, what happens when something goes wrong? Of course, in our laboratory, sometimes also sometimes goes wrong. But if the dissection wasn't properly done, then we just change the dissection. So if the superficial models didn't turn out well for whatever reasons, we just show deeper regions. So there's quite a variety uh, that we can apply. So the vast majority of 
uh, the, the bodies we receive dead, they are of course of older age. And uh, I would presume that the average age of the specimen you can see here on this plane is certainly middle 50 to 60. The specimen usually look younger, but this is because we are trained to look at skin. We judge people. Well, yeah, we judge people's age by skin, by the wrinkles, and perhaps a little bit by the body posture and uh, how people walk and how they move, how flexible they still are. But this is all gone. And the second thing is with the specimen, we like to post them in a very vivid way. And the herder, for instance, in the very beginning, he was certainly at an age where he wasn't even able to do hurling, but it is postured in this way, and you compare this with your, your everyday experience. So you, you know that a 50, 60 year old would, would not do hurling, but here you see it and immediately presume this must have been a young man. We are always looking for new challenges, and a giraffe is definitely a great challenge if it comes to preservation. A giraffe has never been preserved so far, and um, I particularly have chosen the uh, giraffe being part of it because it gives quite a unique insight into the cardiovascular system. If you think of the long giraffe's neck, how would you imagine does the heart, how, how is the heart able to pump all the blood up to the head? But at the same time, it, it, of course it needs a great um, um, pressure. But imagine if the, the giraffe now lowers the neck to eat or drink from the ground. So this strong pressure would normally harm the brain. But anatomy is so fascinating that nature has found ways to overcome this, to allow the blood being pumped all the way up, but not damaging the brain once uh, the pressure um, differs. My personal goal is to engage our, vis our visitors on many different levels, on an emotional, on a physical, on an even philosophical way, and hope that they will leave the, eye the exhibition with an idea of living with inspiration. I do hope that they understand that our body is not just a divine gift or a bounty of nature, our body is our very personal obligation, a lifetime responsibility. And it is a result of our lifestyles. What we do to it matters. And even small changes can do a difference. That is our message with body works. Thank you. Well, we've been going through the uh, exhibition here with uh, myself, my wife, and a few of our friends. We've uh, found it extremely informative. Um, it's one thing to look at bodies and everything that go in them in a book, but to see them in three-dimensional form and uh, the various types of diseases that may occur in human bodies is absolutely fascinating. Um, had a great time here so far, so a uh, very enlightening experience. Exhibits like this, you know, they come around every few often, you know, not very often, but I mean, it's amazing because you get to see you know, the human body. People only see what's made on the outside. You know, they don't understand the different layers, like everything that makes us what we are. You know, I mean, the digestive tract is 30 feet long. It's 30 feet long. <laughs> you know, people don't understand that, but it's huge. You know, like people think, you know, oh, I broke my bone, but they actually, you know, did more damage than just that. So things like this, like just looking around all the people here, all the different exhibits. You know? These few people who are nice enough to donate their bodies to science have not only helped the medical world, but they're educating the public and just the world in general. I think they, they truly made the right decision to do what they did with their lives. Um, I absolutely love the fact that we're coming into the 21st century and stuff like this has become so, education on the human body has become so 
open to the public and everything. Like it's not just closed behind doors and all that stuff. You get to see how complex the whole uh, entire body is.